occasion, an MP forcibly kissed me very, very forcibly and left drool down my face in with 20 other people, including members of parliament all around, like he groped and grabbed me um, and nobody said a thing. I think anytime you've got a workplace without very many proper policies or procedures, where you've got a lot of men in positions of power and a lot of young women in with not very much power, you've got a perfect storm for sexual harassment and assault. That's former political staffer Lauren Dobson Hughes recounting one of her experiences uh, while working on Parliament Hill. Now, she's one of many women who say that time and again, women are being ignored when they bring up allegations of sexual misconduct in the political world. Now, that's why one group is hoping to change that by putting together a framework for political campaigns to give staff a real toolkit on how to react to allegations of sexual misconduct. You definitely feel that um, this is not something that the party leaders or anyone in particular in politics wants you to bring up. And oftentimes you are seen as a burden and they try to silence you. We've also heard it has been uh, that st a statement of that um, you need to have thicker skin. In a perfect world, every um, volunteer who enters this political space would be introduced to someone who's you know, as the campaign manager or as the volunteer manager on a campaign, we'll be dealing with equity issues, with harassment issues. And that hasn't been the case, um, you know, in my experience or in a lot of other um, stories that I hear from young women. So many of the social interactions and the work takes place in campaigns offices and in informal settings. And in a campaign office, especially during a general election or even during by-elections, when the red drops, everybody's focused on getting the vote out. And nobody's uh, actually, nobody has a moment to actually speak to survivors, especially when you're an intern or when you're a volunteer and you don't have that much stability, it's really easy for them to just tell you to not come in anymore. Tell me about the toolkit and what it is that you're hoping to do and change. Uh, what tangible kind of things are you, are you trying to put together? Yes, well, the toolkit is basically going to be a resource for campaign managers and volunteer managers to really get a grasp on what constitutes sexual violence and what are the community care options available in such a busy environment, such as a campaign office to really ensure that people feel safe, people feel hurt, and the education part of it is actually going to be sexual violence support trainings uh, for staff members on campaigns, and we're really hoping to get as many folks to uh, sign on. Now, the Young Women's Leadership Network uh, is hoping to have the toolkit ready by May in time for the provincial and municipal elections. They're also hoping that members across all parties will sign on and commit to using the framework.